Good morning. Welcome back to this week's Word. I'm Pastor Jody, First Baptist Church. So this week I want to go back to Revelations chapter 4 and uh, finish the rest of the story. I know the last time we met uh, on Revelation 4 I only talked about really the two, the, the first two verses. And there's so much that's taking place in chapter 4, I don't want us to miss out on anything. But uh, the whole reason that we come to chapter 4 is because the Lord was addressing the issues in the church, whether good or bad. And we see in five of these churches that the Lord was really pointing out some, some major issues that was happening in the church. In each of these churches, the Lord had the same call, repent, come back to me. Now, you might be wondering, like, why was the Lord calling these churches to repent? Because the Lord wants us to be where he is at all times. He wants us to be in his presence. If we look back to Acts chapter 1, and I know I've mentioned this before, but uh, when the Lord was addressing the, the apostles about going out into the entire world preaching the gospel, it says in Scripture that the Lord ascended back to the kingdom of heaven. It says as the, the apostles were watching, the followers of Christ were watching, that the Lord went straight into the kingdom of heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. The Father sitting on his throne and now Christ sitting at his right hand. And I believe this is a great picture of the throne room in heaven. And through the bloodshed of Jesus Christ in a right relationship with the Lord, we too can come into the throne room. In fact, we are invited to the throne room. Uh, he says, come up here in, in verse 1 of chapter 4. And, and he says, come up here to who? He's, he's talking to the church. He wants us to come into his presence. He invites John up into the throne room. And we know at the rapture of the church that one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to step out from the clouds. He's going to shout with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. And we're going to hear those same words, come up here. Come up where? To the throne room of God, to the throne room of heaven. So the Lord wants us to be in his presence. And we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So spiritually, we can be with the Lord at all times if we continually confess our sins and ask his forgiveness. And one of my favorite verses is, 1 John 1, 9, where the Lord says that he will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That opens the door to his very presence. And so we are invited to go to the throne room. And so I want to start where we left off the last time we were at uh, Revelations chapter 4, and that's with verse 3. Listen as I read verse 3, and we'll discuss these a verse at a time or maybe a couple verses at a time. Verse 3 says, And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. May the Lord have the blessing on the reading of all of his words here today. So here we get a picture of God the Father. Have you ever wondered why we really don't see any, any portraits of God the Father? We see several portraits of Jesus. You know, people maybe have visions of Jesus. We have some description from God's word. Uh, about the appearance of Jesus. And so we've seen several pictures uh, that that show what Christ may have looked like. But when it comes to God the Father, uh, I don't think I have in any way, haven't seen any pictures that would resemble um, what God the Father looks like. And one of the reasons might be is because here John is telling us that he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And so the description that John gives us of the Father, uh, he, he couldn't distinguish any form of a person that was sitting on the throne. Only the brilliance and brightness of precious stones. This, was re this reminds me what the Apostle James uh, said in James chapter 1, verse 17. I, I was quickly reminded of this verse as soon as uh, I read verse 3. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So James even describes him as the Father of lights. And there's no shadow, there's no darkness in him. It's just 
brilliance and brightness coming from the throne. Did you ever wonder why it says in the book of Revelation that we will have no need of the sun nor the moon? We don't need its light because God the Father is the light. And we just see a little bit of that brilliance and that brightness coming through Scripture. And so you can only imagine what effect this had on on the Apostle John when he was brought into the throne room, into the presence of God, and the glory of God was shown. I I can't even begin to wonder uh, how John felt. I believe he probably felt much like many of the prophets, especially I think it was Isaiah who said, woe is me for I am undone. Like he just lost complete control of his functions, his bones, his muscles, and he just, I think, flat on his face. You know, we have that song from Mercy Me, I Can Only Imagine. You know, it talks about what what we, what will we really do when we come into the presence of God Almighty? Well, my imagine, or my imagination would allow me to believe that we'll just fall flat on our faces. It's only by the, the grace of God that he'll raise us back up. So every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no shadow, even in his turning. How awesome is that? So again, this speaks of the brilliance and brightness of God. And then it says here in verse 3 um, that there was a rainbow around the throne and appears like an emerald. You might be wondering, now why was the rainbow there? What's the rainbow doing around the throne? Well, I believe the rainbow is there to remind us of God's covenant with man. The Apostle Paul puts it this way and says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Again, God is reminding us that he is a keeper of the promises that he makes. And so I think it's awesome that in the throne room, the rainbow is represented, proving that God has indeed kept all of his promises. Let's go on down to... Uh, verse 4. It says, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. So the question you might have, too, is who are these 24 elders that's sitting around the throne room of God? Well, I think we have that uh, answer in Revelations chapter 21. I want to read verses 12 through 14. And this is where the Lord is describing the new Jerusalem. So things that we have to look forward to in the kingdom of heaven. So concerning the 24 elders that are sitting around the throne of God. Verse 12 says in Revelations chapter 21, also she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates. And the names were written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So many believe because of this scripture that the twenty-four elders that are sitting around the throne of God are none other than the twelve tribes of Israel and the twelve apostles. Now, I've heard some other theologians speak that, you know, these these 12, these 24 elders represent uh, people in the church, saints in the church. Uh, I want to stick to scripture here as the Lord is revealing to us. I don't think it's a coincidence that there are 24 uh, mentioned here in Revelation 20, 21, 24 elders. And it's the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. So I believe these are the 24 elders that are sitting around the throne. Um, But because we're not given the names of these 24, if you have a different interpretation, I'm not going to argue with you. This is what I believe. So we have these 24 elders sitting around the throne. And we'll find out in just a little bit what their responsibilities are there. But let's now go to verse 5. It says, And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. First, I want to address the the seven spirits of God. Again, this takes us back to Revelations chapter 1, verse 4, where the seven spirits of God are mentioned. And these are the angels of the church. So here we see the church represented even in the throne room. But to go back to the beginning of verse 5, 
And it says, And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders, and thunderings, and voices. What do you think these lightnings and, and thunderings mean? I believe that it is God's righteous judgment. Revelation chapter 8 verse 5. And this is when the seventh seal is open. It says the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. Judgment is coming. And in the throne room, when God speaks, I'm sure it's a thunderous noise. And creation is responding. But God's promise, just like you know, the rainbow represent the covenant with man, that he would never flood the earth again. God's promise is also that he will judge the world. That day is coming very, very soon. And we see that played out starting in Revelation chapter 6 all the way through Revelation chapter 8 as we're opening the seventh seal in verse 5. And then we begin the, the seven trumpets and the bowls are being poured out in the chapters that proceed after that. Look at verses 6 through 8 now. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and all around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes and in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures each had six wings. And they were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. How awesome is this? Constant praise taking place in the throne room of God, in the kingdom of heaven. These four living creatures resemble the four that Ezekiel describes in Ezekiel chapter 1, uh, verse 5 through 10. You can turn to that and, and look for yourself. But Ezekiel describes them in a very similar way. And the role is to give God glory continually. Psalms chapter 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. That means these angelic beings in the kingdom of heaven, their role, they understand it. They're in God's presence. They understand their role is to praise his holy name. Guess what? Let everything that has breath, that's you and I. Our role too is to praise the Lord. And now we're going to see that these these 24 elders that are sitting around the throne, they understand what it means to praise the Lord. Look at verse 9. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Wow. So we have the four angelic beings praising God continually. Now we see the 24 elders doing the same thing. And not only are they praising God, but they're, lying, they're laying their crowns at the Lord's feet. Why do you think they're doing, why do you think they're doing this? Why do you think they're laying their crowns at his feet? 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2, says this, No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our rock. The Lord is the only one who's righteous. He's the only holy one. He's the per only perfect one. And so you might be wondering, why do the, these elders lay their crowns at their feet? Because in God's presence, we quickly understand that we are in the presence of righteousness, of holiness. And he's the only one worthy of any crown. And so I know the Lord wants to bless us and he gives us a crown. And these elders, what they're going to do, and I pray that anybody who has received a crown will do, is to give it right back to the Lord. To lay it at his feet and say, O oh Lord, all glory, honor, and praise belong to you. God wants us to be in his presence. And we can do that through the bread, bloodshed of Jesus Christ. We have an invitation from the Lord Jesus Christ that says, come up here. to Come into the very throne room of God. 
I pray that we are confessing our sins, allowing the Lord Jesus to work in, 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 in us and out through us, that we might bring him glory all the time. Remember what the Lord said in Matthew chapter 5, I believe verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify our Father who art in heaven. He's worthy to be praised. He's inviting us to the throne room. And it's time that we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, thanks for joining me. I pray that you have a blessed week in the Lord.